way, isn't it? So that, uh, I mean, it can be, there is no, um, there is no escaping from everything. We, in other words, we think that we're just doing things, we're throwing bones over our shoulders, but in reality, everything is recorded, isn't it? Every single moment, uh, <laughs> in well, many names for it, the Book of Life, the Akashic Records, Records yeah. uh, it's recorded locally in our higher self matrix on the planet, and yeah. then uh, that is connected to, say, uh, galactic Gaia, and then there's universal Gaia, and it's all connected. Wow. So yeah. if we if we begin to think in, of our lives in terms of uh, <laughs> kind of being naked and everything that we do think and feel is out there in the universe and for everybody to see, it kind of changes the way we might behave if we uh, if we actually understood that deeply enough. I would think yes. Uh, uh, yes, it's true. Up till now. Most of our intelligence, and in fact, most the intelligence of nature at this point has been based on hindsight experience, in mm -hmm. other words. Uh, learning from experience, learning from experience, learning from, you know, making mistakes and correcting. The new intelligence coming in, and we're mm. just about, we're just about ready for it, is called foresight. Mm. And boy, does that speed up everything very beautifully, and it sort of begins the end of karma. Because we're, we're all getting to a level right now where we're starting to realize there is that ideal self within us, that there is that higher self matrix mm -hmm. within us. And we tap into that, we tap into universal intelligence, and our own higher self matrix evolved enough to tap into that around 2,500 years ago. Wow. And that's why humanity peaked spiritually over 2,500 years ago. We've uh -huh. already peaked spiritually. Oh. And uh, it just takes a little while for it to settle in, because over 2,500 years ago, concepts and gods changed dramatically, if you'll just look at just our own history. Uh -huh. But thoughts like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, mm -hmm. came into being. Uh -huh. Now, that's accessing universal uh, consciousness. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just that one alone, you don't need Ten Commandments. Right, right. You know, because that includes looking at nature and looking at everything around you that way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we've had since then is, you know, state religions and everybody saying, my God's better than your God, and my God's blue and your God's green, and, you know, just, you know, <laughs> children, children, children playing with God concepts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I sure do hope that we're at a point where we're getting ready to drop that and grow up a little bit. Well, we, we are. We're getting there. And um, the light has always told me that uh, religious fundamentalism will be the last uh, barrier to us being free. Mm. And in fact, religious fundamentalism is is more dangerous than nuclear proliferation. Mm, well, I would agree with you on that. And it's, one. Uh, it's really um, uh, 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 that that's keeping us from the next step, which the next greatest step in all of human evolution is transcending survival to go to the end of poverty on planet Earth. Because mm -hmm. once we get out of out of survival, you you become that new creation. Because from day one, from our microbial beginnings to the present moment, we are have been caught up in survival, survival, survival. Mm -hmm. But we're technically at a point now where we can end that and begin this new creation. Think about, and I encourage people in my workshops to think about what if you didn't have to work for a living. What if you didn't have to worry about the rent or food, which is all technically possible and is definitely in our future? Mm -hmm. What would you do with your life? Start thinking about that. Mm -hmm. You know, the universe isn't saying everybody has to do great things, but you've been given a life to make up it what you will. What would you make up it? Mm-hmm. Well, that makes a lot of sense, and especially given that so many people are uh, feel as if or have t told themselves that they're stuck in jobs uh, that they don't like with people that they can't stand because they have to survive. And sometimes they have two and three jobs. So that doesn't seem to be a positive um, a positive experience uh, or a harmonic one. Um, and well, I like it, was a, it was a necessary one because um, I got to see and look into the mass potential of our future. And mm -hmm. you really can't see specific dates or events because mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. That's why the, all these and people are always wrong. Mm. In fact, if they get one thing right, it's a career for them. <laughs> but uh, but I was shown that the people of the future look back at us now, mm -hmm. us, the people of the Industrial Revolution, mm -hmm. as the giants of all of history. 
Really? Absolutely. They they are just so amazed at what we were able to accomplish in such a short time that set all of mankind and all of our future free. Wow. And it's true. Most of the jobs out there now are uh, don't seem to have much meaning in them. Um, and our education system is still set up on the Industrial Revolution system, which is bringing you know, people off the farms and teaching them to read and operate machines. And then our education system is still that way because we're really just being trained to be consumers and producers. Mm, right. We're not really being trained, for the most part, to be superior human beings and mm. self-generating, self-correcting, self-organizing, and self-initiating human beings. Mm-hmm. That's what's next. And we have the inklings of that all around us with Montessori and all kinds of, of new education systems. But the people of the future just love us. I mean, we don't see it right now, just like uh, George Washington had no idea what would become. You know, most people didn't join him in that revolution. Yeah. <laughs> they, they kind of sat back and say, oh, we'll see what's going to happen. George <laughs> is going to get his head chopped off. <laughs> but we also tend to look at ourselves now as these ugly caterpillars that are trying to eat every leaf on every tree. Yeah. And we don't realize that within us we're we're going into this chrysalis now, and we are about to become butterflies. Ah. Now, that implies a moment of uh, transformation. Well, uh, a process of transformation. Process of, transformation. Um, of course, there is only one moment of now, but that moment sometimes can, <laughs> you know, it seems like it takes a while. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> um, is <laughs> <laughs> An eternity. Um, yeah. <laughs> one second or eternity, it's the same. Uh, really. Um, uh, so how does does 2012 play into this process of uh, getting our wings? Well, the uh, it does in a way. You know, one of my most popular talks I do now is, is really about 20, uh, 2012 and beyond. Okay. Um, you know, um, forgive me for saying this, but the Mayans weren't New Age shamans. Okay. And uh, just as what's happened with the Bible has happened with the ancient information, including the Maya information, has been cut and pasted to suit whoever. <laughs> uh, we have picked that date. It's not the most important date by far at all. Remember the uh, Harmonic Convergence, 87? Yes, I do. Fantastic convergence. The difference today is is that we have satellite systems and, and communication systems and cable systems, Internet, like we never had in 87. So you've got all these uh, history channels and everybody just making the most of distorting this information and yeah. freaking people out. Yeah. Um, I've been in, uh, uh, invited very regularly since 2010 to speak to professional psychology groups and therapist groups to ex- help them understand this because, um, especially in America, the therapists are being flooded with clients that believe the world's going to end in 2012 oh, right. because they've been watching television. That's right. And reading well, stuff on, you know, reading all this stuff on the internet, which, uh, so I, I look at, okay, we've, we've all sort of agreed to pick 2012 as sort of a pivotal moment, but the real pivotal moment is probably 2020, 2040. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with Mayans, aliens, comets hitting the planet, or plagues, <laughs> by the way. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> it, has nothing, it has nothing to do with any of that. Oh, you know, no. But, but it, it is going to change the world in the most dramatic way imaginable. And it's well, going to well, be absolutely natural. So we would, if it's none of the above, then is this a self-generating uh, correction or uh, shift in consciousness that you're talking well, about? Well, I'll, I'll give you just one piece of it that's, okay. that's both um, um, sobering, and, and I say that because a lot of us have gotten very high and giddy on higher consciousness. I mean, just giddy on it. Maybe it's time to sober up a little bit and grow up, so to right. speak, as spiritual beings. Um, yeah. It's our, you know, we are... Be- you know, we are becoming the elders. Our elders are dying out. That's We're becoming true. the elders now. Yeah. And we have to, and so it's up to us to carry a legacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of important things are happening around 2020, certainly by 2040, and that is, uh, you know, we're hitting zero population growth er- uh, everywhere around the planet. The, the, the population seems like it's growing, and it will grow, but it will stop growing very quickly. It's just like a wave that's coming. You know, the wave, the part of the wave that's coming at you looks large, but there's another part of the wave that's going back under it. Oh. You uh-huh. And so if, if when you count world population right now, uh, and it may hit somewhere around 9 billion maybe, but 
got to keep in mind that over half of this population is over 50 years old. True, true. Where are they going to be in 2060? They aren't going to be here. They're going to be, you know, not here. And uh, the population will drop dramatically starting around 2040. It's already begun that process because in Gaia, you know, Gaia, this is beyond intelligence, doesn't go, oops, I think the population is too late. I ought to do something about it. No, it's way beyond that. So human beings are going to be of so much more value in the future. You know, right now, when you have too much of everything, nothing seems to have that much value. Right. You get spoiled rotten. That's right. And right. Uh, so we don't put much value in almost anything we have now. That's right. You're right about that. So, and especially humans. No, no I kidding. Mean, it's like you were saying earlier, uh, both parents have to work now, and usually the mother's uh, salary goes to pay a stranger to raise her child. Yep, yep. But but that's all that's all uh, wrapping up now. Um uh, it's one of the reasons um that the people of the future just love and admire us is because us us who live in our incarnations through the industrial revolution are, mm. gave our blood, our sweat, our mm. tears and our spirit mm. to all of this. Every machine ever built has a spirit in it. Every oh. machine ever built is a mind machine. It came from the mind. Right. And so we have created great spirit, another level of great spirits that will free us. Oh. I'll give you an example. Okay. What what really freed slavery? Because slavery technically ended around 1807. Mm. It wasn't the do-gooders. It wasn't churches. No. It wasn't that it was wrong. No. And it it was the machines came in in 1807, and you didn't need slaves anymore to be uh, rich. Uh. Machines freed the slaves more than anything else. Now, the machines that we have built and the spirits in these machines are going to free us into the future because we're not meant to be industrial animals anymore. Right, right. That's why, you know, and, and just, God, just bear this a little bit, is that there will never again in the history of the world be as many jobs as there was once before that time is over. Huh. Politicians don't want to tell you that. They know it. The yeah. church knows it. Yeah. You know, uh, think about it, and you know it too. Oh, yeah. So most of our past has been non-industrial. All of our future is non-industrial. We go, we go into a different phase now that frees us, but I'll give, I'll give you another example. You've got maybe 10,000 years, depending on who you believe, Ten to 5,000 years of heavy spiritual evolution. It still didn't free us. We still couldn't feed ourselves. Mm-hmm. We still couldn't do uh, bring the level up for the mass population that it is now. There are more people that have access to water now than ever before in history. More people. It, I, do, I do a whole workshop just on what we've accomplished at this point. So um, as, uh, as, as we move into the future, we're not supposed to be industrial animals. We're, we're, our machines will set us free because they'll be doing the kind of things we need done mm. for us, and we will be going on to the next level of this new creation. It was very beautiful. It's as close as, mm. as maybe one or two incarnations for most of oh, us. Oh, wow. It's very well, close. Does it does it seem as if these uh, if these uh, new creations will be consciously connected to us uh, through uh, our through the life force or through the spirit that will be able there be like living uh, machines that we'll be communicating with? Yeah, you already do, they're already doing that. Oh. Um, in fact, you know you can go to Toys R Us right now and look at these new mind toys where the machines operate by your mind. Uh huh. For the children, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're showing up there first. Oh my goodness! Wow. And uh, you can, and you know, they're about a hundred dollars or more now. The price will come down, but there's all these new toys that you huh. can get where you control it with your mind. Oh, <laughs> isn't that amazing? It is amazing. <laughs> wow. So well, uh, it makes you want to be a kid again. <laughs> and, and also, for all people that believe in nasty conspiracies and, and all of that, it's like a lot of people I know, and forgive me for saying this in the wellness uh, industry, a lot of wellness thinking is illness thinking, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's right. You know, that's and right. the same thing with conspiracies are more powerful than the universe, more powerful than Gaia. It's just, uh, and all these conspir- you know, conspiracies sound way too too good to be true. It's like uh, if you really knew what was going on, you'd see what an oxymoron all this is. Like, <laughs> like the word military intelligence. 
<laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> right. Exactly. Higher consciousness, it's becoming an oxymoron. Yeah. You yeah. know. And so it's time to move on. And we now in some other words. Mm-hmm. Uh learning from experience, learning from experience, learning from, you know, making mistakes and correcting. The new intelligence coming in and mm-hmm. we're just about we're just about ready for it is called foresight. Mm. And boy, does that speed up everything very beautifully, and it sort of begins the end of karma. Because we're, we're all getting touched, recorded locally in our higher self matrix on the planet, and yeah. then uh, that is connected to, say, uh, galactic Gaia, and then there's universal Gaia, and it's all connected. Well, so you know. if we if we begin to think in, of our lives in terms of uh, <laughs> kind of being naked and everything that we do think and feel is out there in the universe and for everybody to see, it kind of changes the way we might behave if we uh, if we actually understood that deeply enough. I would think yes. Uh, uh, yes, it's true. Up till now. Most of our intelligence, and in fact, most intelligence of nature at this point has been based on hindsight experience. Way, isn't it? So that, uh, I mean, it can be, there is no, um, there is no escaping from everything. We, in other words, we think that we're just doing things, we're throwing bones over our shoulders, but in reality, everything is recorded, isn't it? Every single moment, uh, <laughs> in what, many names for it, the Book of Life, the Akashic, Akashic Records, Records yeah. the level right now, where we're starting to realize there is that ideal self within us, there is that higher self matrix mm-hmm. within mm-hmm. us. And we tap into that, we tap into universal intelligence, and our own higher self matrix evolved enough to tap into that around 2,500 years ago. Wow. And that's why humanity 